This land is my land. 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 Yeah, Sam, I think you're I think you're singing the song wrong. No, I'm not. Well, yeah, actually the song goes this land is your land. Well, that sucks. It's the early 1700s, and literally no one lives in Florida. This was mostly due to smallpox, but also because Disney World was nowhere to be seen and old people hadn't been invented yet. However, as we all know, move your meat, lose your seat comes into effect after a while, so a bunch of other American Indians, mostly Creek, decided that they'd go ahead and settle the area. The Spanish people in Florida started to call these newcomers cimarrones, which sort of maybe kind of translates into wild ones. So when the English took over in 1763, they were like, let me mispronounce this, and started calling all the Indians in Florida Seminoles. The relatively small Seminole population was further bolstered by many runaway slaves from the 13 colonies who soon assimilated into the culture, becoming Black Seminoles. One of these Black Seminoles was named John Horse and lived a pretty cool life, so you should go check out Jack Rackham who made a video about him. After you watch this video, please pay attention to me. After America got revolutioned, Spain took over Florida again and was pretty chill about just letting the Seminoles do their thing. However, one of their things involved siding with the British in the War of 1812 and raiding a bunch of American towns. Luckily for the Seminoles, the US hadn't figured out the difference between them and the Creek, so they just ended up fighting the Creek. Unluckily, the U.S. couldn't figure out the difference between them and the creek. Alright, time for you to leave. What? Yeah, the creek lost the war, so now you guys have to leave. But we're not creek. Yes, you are. No, we're not. Okay, I don't get it. Johnson, can you get the cavalry in here? The Seminoles weren't exactly stoked about this situation, so they killed a bunch of Americans on a boat, which made the US mad for some reason, but since Spain controlled Florida, it's not like they could just walk in and attack them. Turns out that Andrew Jackson was fine just straight up invading Spain without government permission and then hunting down the Seminoles with his army. So, I mean, what can you do? Since Florida was already overrun with American troops, Spain decided that they might as well make some money off this and sold Florida to the US for $5 million, which is honestly way more than the state is worth, even today. Now that Florida was in American territory, the war ramped up against the Seminoles. They were forced to sue for peace in 1823 and were relocated to a reservation in the swampy interior of the state. All around, kind of a bummer. It's 1828, and guess who was just elected President of the United States? Here's a hint. He's the Seminoles' favorite white guy. He was a war hero in the War of 1812. His name rhymes with Mandrew Qua- It's- it's Andrew ja Andrew Jackson is the President of the United States. In a big plot twist, it turned out that Andrew Jackson wasn't a huge fan of American Indians and decided that they should probably all go move somewhere else. The Seminoles were a little bit annoyed with this, so they put up a bit of a fuss. Finally, the US agreed to let the Seminole chiefs survey their assigned land out west before they were forced- I mean, decided to go. Yep, looks like Oklahoma. Thanks for the offer, but I think we'll have to pass on this one. Well, actually, you signed here saying that you'd move west. I shall make the white man red with blood! Yep, you don't seem dangerous. Here, have a gun. That dude was named Osceola, and he was especially salty about this whole getting cheated out of his land thing. He quickly began organizing other chiefs who opposed moving west, and with their help, decided to go to war. The Seminoles struck first when, on December 28, 1835, Osceola assassinated the local U.S. ambassador, and another group ambushed 110 American soldiers, killing all but two of them. Just imagine it. One moment you're walking along through some swampy quagmire thinking, yeah, put some mouse ears over there, a retirement center over there, maybe we can make something out of this place. And the next moment you're lying on the ground riddled with bullet holes. 
pretty upsetting. The American government thought so too and sent a thousand soldiers under the command of General Edmund Gaines, but he got pinned down by a Seminole counterattack and was only able to retreat after he received reinforcements. Next up was General Winifield Scott, who planned to trap the Seminoles in a huge pincer movement with 5,000 men, but disease was a thing, so that failed. After that disaster, the governor of Florida, Richard K. Call, took over in the fall of 1836 and was able to kick the Seminoles out of some towns in the north, but was unable to destroy them and allowed them to slip away into the swamps. Finally, this guy named Thomas Jessup decided that he'd give this Seminole War thing a shot and took over command of the army later in 1836. Instead of trying to fight one big battle, Jessup focused on wearing the Seminoles out by fighting a bunch of little battles. This actually worked pretty well, and the Seminoles were soon growing weary of the war and started surrendering to the Americans and gathering in emigration centers for their journey west. Osceola saw this and wasn't super on board, so he broke into the main emigration center and convinced all the Seminoles there that Oklahoma was stupid and that they'd be better off fighting the Americans. Jessup felt pretty betrayed by the Seminoles at this point, so he figured that the rules of war just didn't apply anymore, so he started capturing a bunch of Seminole leaders, including Osceola, under flags of truce, which is just objectively not cool. Now that he had the upper hand again, Jessup launched a major offensive south with 9,000 men, but was unable to completely dislodge the Seminoles from the swamps. However, with all their leaders in jail, the Seminoles couldn't fight on for much longer, so they offered to stop the war if they were allowed to keep living in the south of Florida. This seemed fairly reasonable, so the US was like, hmm, and no. Interestingly, Jessup kind of felt like a scumbag about this whole thing, so he actually resigned as general and was replaced by Zachary Taylor. Taylor fought mostly a defensive war, but was able to slowly grind down the Seminoles enough where by 1841 most Seminoles had left Florida, and there were only about 500 left hiding in the swamps. This brought an end to the Second Seminole War. Florida became a state in 1845, but no one wanted to move there because they heard the land was stupid and the Seminoles were some G's, so Florida started to apply pressure to get the Seminoles to leave. By late 1855, the Seminoles were getting angsty because the US kept trying to take their land. They began raiding settlements and killing settlers, which wasn't super convenient for the US, so Florida raised a 400-man militia to kick the Seminoles out once and for all. Problem was, was that half the militia had to grow crops so that the other half wouldn't starve, so only 200 men could be patrolling the peninsula at any given time. The citizens of Florida thought that this was dumb, so they called in the army who built a ton of forts and started to wear down the Seminoles again. Scattered fighting continued for a few years, but by 1858 less than 200 Seminoles remained in Florida. However, these few survivors never surrendered their land, and there are still Seminoles in Florida today. Once again, big shout out to my boy Jack Rackham who made a video on the life of John Horse, which is super interesting. Um, as Supreme Leader of North Korea, I order you to check it out. Here's a link. <laughs>